Well, welcome Bob Barn Workshop fans. I've been doing some work on the trailer that I just didn't film because I'm trying to get it done before the snow flies here, but here's what we got. I got the beautiful aluminum diamond plate all put on. I drilled and tapped quarter inch screws in it. Uh, truss heads, uh, stainless steel, so they won't rust, it won't turn into a mess. It's gonna look like this forever. Uh, let's see what else. I started preparing to weld the pockets on here. So I need the stake pockets welded on to hold the side. So I got a couple on. I'm gonna try some new rod today, some 7018. I got two back here to do. And uh, I gotta grind some of this off and redo it. They look really, really crappy. I tried doing that with a wire welder and it just wasn't hot enough. But uh, I'm gonna go over these welds with the 7018 and see if I can do any better. All right, I'll be back. All right, we're set up here. I'm going to try to uh, get that guy with 75 amps. Seventy eighteen rod. Um, Three thirty seconds. It's 75 amps. And I saw a guy do it in your zigzag like stitch. Let me get the gloves. Get my favorite helmet on. All right. I'm going to tilt that rod a little bit, but he said don't. I'm just trying to tack this right now. I didn't get enough onto the frame. That ain't enough current. I can tell you that right now. So we're gonna do 90. There we go. Seventy eighteen is a lot harder to weld with than sixty eleven to thirteen. Once you get drawn an arc. That's flux. No, it's steel. No, it's flux. Well, we're getting there. I like it. I'm getting good penetration anyway. under the welding. There we go. 
Got a really deep burn on that one. Now, yeah, I'm going to grind these to clean them up because they look like hell. See a lot of this flux. But I'm saying that's welded more than enough to hold a, a steak pocket on. The problem is, is I got bifocal glasses on that keep on getting the line in the wrong place. Looking better. Point is, I got to get this done. Boy, it's hard to keep an arc. Yuck! I never claimed to be a welder. But, it's welded. Yuck. Oh well, I'm just going to go in there with the edge of my welder and uh, tack them on. So that's what I'm doing with this. You don't need to see the rest. I'll show you when I build the uh, tailgate hinge. Well, fans and friends, Bob's Barn Workshop. Here we are back in the barn. Yeah, the barn's a mess. I'm not even going to show you the inside. But we're going to do most of our work outside today. La two years, summers ago, I re first, uh, resurfaced this trailer. Put new uh, stake body stakes on the sides. Um, turned it over, wire brushed it, uh, coro sealed it so it was uh, rust proofed. And now I'm going to make a, a tailgate. Now the tailgate, I'm going to make a hinge out of some tubing with a rod that fits through the center. So I'll take like six inch pieces and put them alternately across the back. And uh, I've got to cut those tie downs off. I might be able to put them back. But I'm going to put the this hinge sticking out this way so that the edge of the uh, gate is out here when it comes up. And that'll give me enough to drop it a few degrees because this trailer tilts, if you remember. So I'm only going to make it two foot wide. But when I crank the front end up, I'm going to put a jack on the front. A scissor jack between the tongue and the box so that I can tilt it open the gate and then I on top of the when I get the uh, posts up here I'm gonna make a, a uh, use like a bolt winch in here just in case I want to pull stuff up on uh, on the sides I'm gonna build some plywood boxes and uh, put my jack 
and my, my crank handle for the scissor jack and uh, the boat winch so that I've got all my accessories with me. So I got to start cutting some stuff off first. These tie downs got to go. These tail lights are going to go. I'm going to attach them to the, uh, the tailgate. Everybody runs into these trying to load and unload it and they're really not happy about that. So I'm going to grind the welds, take those off. And uh, so this is going to be a long project. I, I know I won't get it done today, but we're going to work on it. All right. Let's see if I can make any progress grinding these off. Well, I don't have my plug plugged in. I got a really heavy duty 12 gauge cord, so. Start with this big guy. Now let's cut almost all the way through. I'm going to cut through the top here where I can cut down straight through. I got me an old sharpened up cold chisel here. Alright, that little chunk's gone. It doesn't have to be real flat anyway. You can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do the same thing to these tail light mounts. In my infinite wisdom, I wasn't able to, uh, I mean, I put this bracket on. I should have cut this off first, but I'm going to try to just slit the weld to weaken it. Of course, that's too low, and that's the wrong angle. So, maybe I'll just beat on it a little bit. I don't know if I can break the weld, though. I may have a big hammer around here somewhere. If not, I got a big one at the house, in the house barn. Yeah, I will. 
those are good, didn't they? Okay, I'm going to grind away on that some more. This looks cracked all the way up here. Breaking it. I do a good job welding that crap, I'll tell you that. Well, I guess I should grind away on this a little more and see if I can get it looser, more loose. This is a goose. Oh, it's definitely cracked. Now I need a 7 inch diameter grinder is what I need. Let me think a minute. I got a cutting torch, but I certainly don't want to. Yeah, she's loose all the way around the bottom. Dingle dangle dongle. Uncle dongle. I do have torches. Let's see if we can torch it off. <laughs> 